page 125. Right. Amar Bar Hamduri, Amar Shmuel. Krumyot Shel Machtelet Mutar Letal Flamba Shabbat. Shreds of a reeded mat can be moved on Shabbat. My Tama, what's the reason? Why, meaning, wouldn't I be Muksa? Amar Rava, Barhamduri Aspar Ali, Barhamduri explains to me like this, Machtelet Gufa Lamachazia, for what is the mat suitable? The Chasuye Be Afrat, cover dust with it, so you cover dust with the mat. Hane Nami Chazian Le Chasuye Behu Tinofet. So too, these shreds are suitable to cover dirt as well. Ama Rabbi Zer Ama Rav Shiare Proz Miot Asur Le Talzman Shabbat Remnants of a Talit cannot be moved on Shabbat. Ama Rabaye the mat the matla niot she'ain b'hen shalosh al shalosh with patches that are less than three by three finger breadths, de la chazian lo la aniim ve lo la ashirim. They're mukta because they're unsuitable if it's that small for either the aniim, the paupers, or the ashirim, or by people of means. And it's specifically in regard to talit remnants or talit patches. Mm. But it says that it says that if it's not made of a tal- do you have anything there about that halacha? Well, there's small rags that don't have an area of three by three. Mm. It's perfect, but just move rags that are smaller than three by three finger breadths in size, as per the opinion of the buyer. Some authorities permit moving rags even smaller than three by three finger breadths because they are usable. If the rags are the remains of an object used for a mitzvah, e.g. a prayer shawl, it is prohibited to use them. Son uh-huh. Rabbanan. Because his initial translation here is just remains of cloaks. And it's only in the side note that he makes it clear that it's the talent. And we're worried about the talent. Tan Rabbanan, Shivrei Tanu Yashan, shards of an old oven. Harehen Kechol Hakilim Hanitalin Bechatzer. I like utensils that may be taken in a courtyard. Does that mean in a courtyard or? Within may be moved in a courtyard. They may be moved in a courtyard. Ah. Like all vessels that may be moved in a courtyard. Divre Rabbi Meir, that's what Rabbi Meir said, Rabbi Yehuda Meir, Ein Nitalin, they cannot be taken. Heid, Heid Rabbi Yossi Mishum Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. Rabbi Yossi testified in the name of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. Al Shirei Tanu Yashan. In regard to the shards of an old oven, shinitalim be Shabbat, they can be moved on Shabbat. But al kisuyo, and concerning the cover the cover of an oven, she'enotarich beit yad, that it does not need a handle in order for it to be moved on Shabbat. But my kmitlage, just a, a word there. He's got no picture. But this oven that may be moved uh, on Shabbat and with the cover, it's awfully obviously talking about one of those Indian type tanurim where you slap in the red from the top. Because mm. that's why you'd need the lid. Otherwise, if it's a sealed oven, it doesn't have a lid. And then we were talking yeah. about the red a few weeks ago and they had pictures of where the bread goes in does your side lead? yep oh well it says cover it says cover which does not require a handle mm. it 
does not need a handle in order for it to be allowed to move it on Shabbat. Okay. But my chemical game, what do they disagree? Amar Abaye. Be'osin me'ein malacha ve'ein osin me'ein malacha tan kemiflagei. They disagree about where the shahs can perform some sort of task, but not perform something of their former task, something similar to their former task. But asda, so that's so what it's saying is so it says originally the brace said the shahs of an old of an old oven can be moved in a courtyard. So, this has just told us about where it's shards where you don't use it for a similar task of mm-hmm. being an oven. But Azda Rabbi Uda Latame, and Rabbi Uda follows his own reasoning that these shards are nolad. But Rabbi Mary Latame. And Rabbi Meir has his own reasoning that the shards um, can be moved. Matifla Rava, Rava objected to this. Ihachi, if so, ad ad miflagei b'shivrei tanur. Instead of arguing about shards of an oven, lipalgu b'shivrei kelim ba'alma. They should have argued about shards of any vessel or utensil. Mm. That's a good point. Ela ma rabba. Alternatively, the shivre de hai tano kamiflage. Regarding the shards of the following oven, is what they disagree about. Ditnan, we have a Mishnah. Nitano al pi habor or al pi hadut. So if you placed an oven over the mouth of the pit or over the mouth of a cistern, venatan sham even, and you placed a stone there to wedge the oven in. Yeah? Mm. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, im masik milamata, vehu nisok milamala. If one can heat it from underneath, uh, and it will be seated above, this is once you put the stone in, you, you shove the stone in. Yeah, tame. It is tame. Is this is what he's saying? We're looking at. We have the fire pit or whatever, and the clay oven as a separate structure is raised over it. And the stones are used to steady it and hold it in place. Oh yeah. Well, do you need to do that? But why would you say wedge it in? It actually says... Oh, it doesn't say wedge it in. Uh, what, are you, what does your say? It doesn't say to hold... So, where it says he placed a stone there... Um, hang on. And a ton shunt there then. Okay. And with regard... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Whether an oven or so should be a broken piece of... Hang on. No. Here. This is where we are. Mm-hmm. With regard to shards of this particular oven, they disagree. As we learned in the Mishnah, with regard to he's added with a, mm-hmm. regard to a clay oven that is not attached to the ground with mortar in the standard manner, mm-hmm. but rather one placed it over the mouth of a pit mm-hmm. or over the mouth of a cistern, mm-hmm. and he placed a stone there between the wall of the pit and the oven to secure the oven in place. Rabbi Yehuda says, and so it says, between the wall of the pit, he, and he placed a stone there, yeah. and he's expanded it by saying between the wall of the pit and the oven to secure the oven in place. Oven over the mouth of the pit. The oven over the mouth of the pit is supported by stones alongside. That might be, I'm only guessing, that might be because, as you can see, it's made out of, it's been assembled out of sloppy clay, or well, yeah, clay, cover. the uh, oven yeah. part, yeah. and you need the stones to stop it spreading. I'm 
only guessing, oh. but that seems to me a possibility. Okay, now I'll show you the, the interesting diagram here. So here you've got the oven over the pit, and ah. so it doesn't fall into deeper. the pit. Yeah, you wedge stones into it. I mean, if it's possible you can actually look at this in the same way, like as in these stones here may actually be going under the ground. Yeah, you could. Um, but it, in a way it's regardless. In yeah. either case, um, it says it is tame. So what's it referring to, what's being referred to as being tame, Peter? Is it the stone that's wedged in? Or is it the oven? It's the oven. It can take on the status ah, because it's it, been it, it, it's, it becomes a vessel. It's become a, it says here it's become attached to the ground. Uh, and it's susceptible, therefore it's susceptible to well, it. That could be it. Or, I mean, it seems to me yeah. that when you light the fire mm. inside there, it bakes the clay and turns the clay into a curly For sure. Yeah. And I think that comes out a bit later in the argument that they discuss that aspect. Okay. Okay, so let's keep going. Mm. All right. The im la taho, but if not, so if it doesn't get wedged in, it's not secure, mm. it is tahor. Yeah. Uh, if fire lit on the floor of the pit will not generate enough heat inside the oven for baking, but the fire must be lit in the oven itself on a makeshift fl makeshift floor, the oven is not susceptible to tumor. Aha! So it really has to be s really solid to the ground for it to become uh, tumor. Is the government where will it Ah, so we're going to discuss it. Yes. Okay. The Chachamim Omrim, Ho'il Vahosak Mikol Makom Tame. Since the oven was heated by any means, it is Tame. Aha, uh -huh. so. And he tells that, uh, and the rabbis say, since it can be heated in some manner, mm -hmm. it can become ritually impure because it serves its standard purpose. As a vessel, yeah. Mm. Over my kamiflage, in what do they disagree? That is, Rebbe Huda and the sages. Bahai Kara, uh, with the following verse. Tanur vechiraim yutats. An oven or a stone, and then I've got in brackets that became tame, shall be demolished. Yeah? And everything upon which, and he's got a quote. Tmeim hem or tmeim yulachem. Well, it goes starts earlier, and Go everything ahead. upon which any part of their carcass falls shall be impure, whether oven or stove. It shall be broken in pieces. They are impure, and they shall be impure to you. Brilliant. Rabbi Yehuda Savar, Rabbi Yehuda holds, mechusar nititza tamei that. Uh, It can't basically if it can't be demolished because it's attached to the ground. What do you have? Then it can be tame. Rabbi Yehuda holds an oven that lacks smashing. That is, it is whole and can be broken, can become impure. She'ein mechusar uh, as opposed to one that is that does not. What do you have? What, what, that that does not lack smashed? smashing, yeah, but it is situated in a place where it is not completely effective. It is is considered broken and is pure. It's pure. So it says here, the expression demolishing, or as you've got smashing, mm. is appropriate only to structures that are attached to the ground. Breaking is the appropriate term for describing the destruction of ordinary vessels, by employing the former expression, the verse implies that an oven becomes susceptible to tumour only if it is first attached to the ground in some measure. 
one that is not attached to the ground at all is already demolished, whoa, albeit not broken, and thus cannot become susceptible to tumour. That's what Rashi says. This limitation pertains only to ovens which do not function properly unless they are attached to the ground. Other vessels are susceptible to tumour only when not attached to the ground. Other vessels are susceptible to tumour only when not attached to the ground. Okay. The Rabbanan Savre, but the rabbis hold, where it says at the end of the verse, Tmeim Yulachem, they shall remain tame to you. What does this teach? Mikom makom, that in all cases, whether they're attached to the ground or not, are susceptible to tumor. And he, the way he says that this shall be impure to you in any case, under any circumstances, he says it to them. Good. The Rabbanan Nami, but for the rabbis too, Hachtiv yutat. Why does it say shall be demolished? Why hachtiv yutat? It's written yutat shall be demolished. Hahu leidach gisa. So it should be read. The rabbis say that it should be interpreted in an opposite way. Mm. The Sakat Tachamina, he might have thought to say, Kevan de Chabre Baara Kagufa de Aradame, since the oven was attached to the ground, it is like the ground itself mm. and therefore not susceptible to Tuma. That's what I would have thought in the yes. first place. Kam Kamashmalan, the Torah therefore informs us. Using the word Yutat, even though it's attached to the ground, it is susceptible to Tuma. Uh, the way he goes on, therefore it teaches us, and then he adds, that since it is possible to detach it from the ground, it is indeed impure. Ah! Because if you didn't have the stone to wedge it in, you could mm. detach it. Yep. Ah! Brilliant. And it's like any other vessel that can acquire impurity. Brilliant. That's why you need that stone mm. at the very beginning. The Idach Nami now... For the other Tana to Rabbi Huda, Hachtiv to me in Yulachem, why uh, it's written, they shall remain Tame to you. That would seem to include even ovens that were not attached to the ground as being susceptible to Tuma. Hahi, Kidrav Yudah Mashmuel, that is in accordance with Rabbi Huda in the name of Shmuel. It says that it's a superfluous phrase in accordance with Rav Yehuda in the name of Shmuel. Dama Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel Machloke Behesek Rishon The dispute between the rabbis and Rav Yehuda pertains to the very first heating of the oven Aval Behesek Sheni but for second and subsequent heating but for the second heating Afilu Talui Betavar Gamal Even if the oven is suspended from the neck of a camel, it can remain, it, it can become susceptible to tumour. Does that make sense to you, Peter? Does that, is that the way it's written there? Well, that fits in with what I was saying. Yes, it's the way it's... Um, and he's added, since it has already been fired up once, it is impure. In other words, it's become a, a container. Right. At any rate, Rabbi Huda holds that a new oven does not become classified as a utensil with regard to tumor susceptibility unless it is attached to the ground for the first heating, whereas the rabbis hold that it becomes classified as a utensil regardless of the circumstance of the first heating. Rabbi said, I agree with the rabbis. I mean, once it's baked and becomes a movable thing, it's obviously a utensil in its own right, whether it's attached to the ground or not. In fact, the you know, with this baked, movable thing, yeah. it's more, even more obviously a utensil than one that's attached to the ground. Yeah, surely. Can I just, I just want to read this, read this paragraph? Yeah. Okay. It says, Rabbi says that this very dispute finds expression with regard to the law of Muqsa in the Brisa side above, cited above. The Brisa deals with the shards of an oven that was heated up for the first time 
while detached from the ground and then broke. Rebu Huda, who does not consider the oven a utensil while it is intact, holds that the shards too are not considered utensils and are therefore mortar. Rebu Meir, however, concurs with the rabbis who consider the oven a utensil and therefore he holds that when it breaks, its shards are not mutza because you can use them. Are you leaking? I don't know why there's a piece of rubber under there. Matkiv la Ravashi. Ravashi objected. Ihachi ad miflegei if so, instead of arguing about the shards of the oven, they should have argued about the oven itself, undamaged. Even if the oven itself is, according to Rivia, not a utensil, it's necessary. Is it necessary uh, to say that it's shards? Are not utensils? Right. Ela mm. and if they're not utensils, then they're muksa. Ela maravashi le olam kedamran meikara. Actually, it's as we stated above, uh, meaning that the dispute pertains to shards that are suitable for a, some sort of task and nothing to do with their former task. Over Oseh, <laughs> doesn't that, that's just like, let's forget about everything we just read and. Over Oseh Maseh Tapka, and the case is where the shards can be used for, uh, in the manner of tiles. Uh, it says here that you would peat them from underneath and then bake dough on top of them, Peter. Do you have anything like that? Uh, he just he describes it as a ceramic board. Ceramic board. Um, that makes sense, yeah. And uh, in the note on language, from the Iranian root tap, meaning to warm up or to heat. The Persian tabak refers to a frying pan. Um, ceramic board. According to Rabbi Yehuda, food is roasted, not baked on the ceramic board. Therefore, the earthenware shard is not comparable to a complete oven used oh, for okay. baking. Either way. The Rabbi Meir Lidvarav, the Rabbi Yodor Kamar. Rabbi Meir spoke according to the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Lidibia filu be'osin me'ein malacha. According to my opinion... Even if they can be, if they can perform any sort of task, But according to your opinion, gavna At least concede to me that in this case, their use is something similar to their former task, yep. and therefore they can be moved. Rabbi Yehuda. But Rabbi Yehuda holds, Lodame, the current use is not similar. Hatam heseko mi bifnim. There, uh, when it was intact, the, the oven, it would be heated from the inside. That doesn't sound. Okay, so that's completely a bit different. Hacha heseko mi bachotz. And here, regarding the, shards. regarding the shards, they must be heated from the outside i.e. the fires underneath them. Hatam mm. me'umad. Also there, uh, it was in a standing position, mm. meaning that the tiles were walls. Hachalav me'umad. And here, when it was shattered, it's not in a standing position. They're more used as a griddle. He'id rabbi yossi Mishum Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. Rabbi Yossi testified the name of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. Al Shivrei Tanur Yashan Shnitalin Be Shabbat. Concerning the shards of an old oven that may be taken, that may be moved on Shabbat, but Al Kisuyo Sheinot Tarich Beit Yad. And concerning its cover that it does not need a handle, 
Ama Ravina, Kaman Metaltli Nan Haid Na Kisui Lit de Tanure, de Mata Mechasia. And according with whom do we nowadays move the move the oven covers of the town of Mechasia? What is it? In according with whom do we nowadays move the oven? De Ain Lahem Beit Achiza, which do not have handles. Oh, sorry, on whose advice do we move oven covers which don't have handles? Kaman, or Kaman, in accordance with, in accordance with whom? Karabi Eliezer ben Yaakov. As a rule, the halacha follows opinions said by Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov, which we're going to talk about on the next page. Okay, I'm curious. Would you like to one two sixteen note seventeen because it Mishnah Ha Evan Shabake Ruya stone that is in a gourd shell. They used gourds to use uh, to gather water ah. and use them as jugs. Have you ever had a gourd? Have you ever eaten gourd? I don't think I've ever eaten it. I, I know I've uh, ha- great. had um, this part, you know, I've held it and seen it. Uh-huh. Tastes and, brilliant. Uh, some people decorate them. Maybe we can find a gourd for your Indian party. <laughs> do they have gourds in India? I'm sure they do. Ah, we'll have to find one. So and the, stone, they... the stone is necessary because they're very light. So if you want to get water, you put a stone in them. Ah, they'd float on so, the water. Yes, yeah, so you can help ah. push it down and get the water. In. Brilliant. I wondered, a stone? And then it becomes clearer as you're going on. That's fun. Ha'evin shebeke ruya, the stone in a gourd shell, im mimalin ba ve'ena nofelet, if it can be drawn without the stone falling out, because it's attached inside, mimalin ba, we can draw water with it on Shabbat. Ve'im lav, ein mimalin ba, but if not, we may not draw water with it, meaning if the stone's going to fall out, mm. we can't use it to draw water. Zimora Shahik Shura Batafia, a vine that is tied to a pitcher. What I'm saying. A vine that's tied to a pitcher. Ah! Of course, of course, I didn't figure that out. Because, you know, I mean, you're getting water out of something. Oh, it's the rope that they lower it down with, no? Well, it could be the rope, or it could be a stick, you know something stick, but it's more likely to be a rope-like. But to let it down into the well, and you attach it to the pitcher. Mimalin bab the Shabbat, we can draw water with it on Shabbat. If it's fixed, if it's loose, you can't. So it's tied to a pitcher. Mm. Ah. So it's become, it's actually becomes part of the yep. clip. Pekak hachalon, a window shutter. Rabbi Eliezer Omer. Do you remember the pakak is the, the one that can that was used by the merchants as shelves? Do you recall that in Brachot? They they would take the shutters off their windows and use the uh, as shelves to put stock on. I didn't recall that, but it fits in very nicely with what we're going to learn. The kachachalon. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Bizman Shehu Kashur Vetalui, when it's attached and suspended, meaning it's not being used as a shutter? When it's attached and suspended, that means it is being used as a shutter. Ah, uh, no, no. It's, no, it's just when it's so it's tied onto the wall somehow. And when it is tied to and hanging from the window, right. that is, it is not touching the ground, he said. It. 
Then it says, pocket kimbo. Mm. We may shut with it on Shabbat. Yeah. Because it is not considered building is added. So it's it's really just a, a, mm. it's a little shutter on the hinge, well, basically, isn't it? Probably a leather hinge. Again, as we were discussing yesterday, he's given you a, a sort of picture. Yeah. That's the one, and there it is resting on the floor. Ah. So this one wouldn't be allowed to be used. That was the one that's resting on the floor. Mm. Um, the im love, but if not, so if it's not suspended from the wall or whatever, mm. and pocket kimbo, we can't shut the window with it. The chachamim omrim ben kach or ben kach pocket kimbo. Yep. In either case, we can shut the window sure. with it. Gemara. Tanan Hatam, we learned in Mishnah elsewhere. Where was that? In oh, page 142. Evan she'al pi hechavit, the stone that's on top of a cask. Mm. Probably to keep the lid down, something like that. Or just to cover the opening, like a lid. Ah. Mata al tzida vehinofelet, one may tilt the cask on its side so the stone falls off. Uh, Amar Rabba, Amar Rabbi Ami, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Lo shano ela b'shocher. They taught this only where one forgot uh, the stone on the cask. Avav amaniach. But where you left it there intentionally before Shabbat, na'asa basis le'davar ha'asur. The cask has become a base to a forbidden object and it can't be moved. The Rav Yosef Amar Rabbi Asi Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Lo shanu ela be shocheach. They taught this only where one forgot the stone on top. Aval be maniach, but where one left it there intentionally. Naasa kisui lehechavit. It has become, it becomes classified as a cover to the cask. And it can be lifted. Okay, any other cover. So, we have a dispute over whether you need to tip the cask mm. over and let it roll off, or just, or just lift it up. Mm. Because in both cases it was just forgotten about. Amar Rabba, mot vinan ashmitin, ashmatin. We can challenge this principle of the Mishnah. Ha'even shebek ke a stone in a gourd shell. Im memalin ba ve'enan ofelet memalin ba, if we can draw the water with the shell, with the gourd, without the stone falling out, we can draw water with it. Velohi, and this does not contradict, Hatam Kevan de Hadka Shavya Dofen. There, with the Mishnah, since the person fastened the stone securely to the shell, inside the gourd shell, is it inside or outside? He just says, attach to the gourd. He doesn't see in or out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he has made it. He has made a part of the wall. Mm. So what's that similar to? That's similar to making the stone part of, like making it a base to the object. Oh, the, the whole of this, because he's made okay. some nice little additions. Rabbi said... We raise an objection to our halacha from the Mishnah. With regard to a stone that is in a gourd used to draw water, if they fill it with water and the stone does not fall, one may fill it on Shabbat. Apparently, if the stone is designated for a purpose, it is no longer mukta. He rejects the proof. And that is not so, as these cases are not comparable there in the case of the stone in the gourd. Since one attached it to the gourd, he rendered the, the stone a wall of the gourd mm-hmm. and part of the vessel, unlike in the case of the stone atop the barrel. Amar Rav Yosef, Omot Vinan Ashmatin, and we challenge our principle... Im lavein memalin ba, 
If not, so this is from the Mishnah. And, of and the he's added, Lord. and the stone does fall. If, and if not, if and he's not, added, and the stone does fall. And the stone does fall, we may not draw water with it. Mm. Okay, right? So that's from the mission of our Mishnah now. Uh, so we see that <coughs> a stone is He's placed not, in the vessel. A stone that is not attached is not considered to be part of the vessel. So you must... So it's not fastened to it, you, not attached. Mm, is not considered to be part of the vessel and is therefore mukta. Uh -huh. He rejects the proof. Okay, Velohi. Hatam Kevan de Lohad Kabatule Batla. There, since he did not fasten it securely to the shell, he nullified its classification as a utensil. Uh -huh. And it remains Mukta. And it remains Mukta. That's what he said. So, hang on, if it remains Mukta then doesn't that make it impossible to use the gourd to lower into the water? I would have thought so. So you have to make it attached to the, sh to the mm. shell. I suppose essentially you have to attach it to the shell. Yep. The Maikamiflage. Now what do they disagree about? Maasava the Inan. Maase. Master. That's Rabbi in the name of Rabbi Yami. In the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Holds. An act is required to turn the stone into a utensil. So an act is required. Or mar sava lobina maser. And the other master, Rabbi Yosef, in the name of Rabbi Yosef, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, they hold that no act is required. And therefore, if you just stick the stone on the cask, it's considered uh, it's considered part of the utensil, or it's considered uh, having a designated purpose. Uh, uh, a designated I think utensil. what they're saying is... you. You just need to designate it in your mind. Yep, brilliant. I'd say so too. Yep. The azdu le tamayehu, and they, Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi, follow their own reasoning. The chiyatarav dimi amarav Rabbi Chanina. See, up to this point, Peter, you and I have got it. Now it's just going to take us somewhere where we're not going to get it. Azdu le tamayehu. So they follow their own reason. Dichiata Rav Dimi Amar Rabbi Chanina. So Rav Dimi came to Babel, came to Babel, and he said in the name of Rabbi Chanina. The Amri Lama Rabbi Zera Amar Rabbi Chanina. Some say it was Rabbi Zera. Pamachat Halach Rabbi Lama Kamechad. Rabbi once went to a certain place before Shabbat. Umatzanid Bach Sholavanim. He found a row of stones prepared for building. The Amar Lutamidav, and he said to his students. Go out and have intent so that we can sit on these tomorrow. I'm sure we've seen this before. The law Hitzrichan Rabbi Lamasen Rabbi did not require them to actually perform the act uh, to prepare it. The Rabbi Yochanan Amar Hitzrichan Rabbi Lamasen Rabbi did not did require them to do an act. Maya Malachu What did Rabbi tell them to do? Rabbi Amar Rabbi Ami Amar Se'u v'lamdum amalehu. He said, go and position the stones. So we don't need to, re to move them again. Rabbi Yassi Amar, Se'u v'shaf shafum amalehu. He told them, go out and wipe them clean. So that was their way of showing that we're going to use them by wiping them. And there's a slide little side note here Excellent. on going and arranging the stones. Some commentaries explain this phrase to mean learn to identify them. Each student was instructed to choose a specific stone and identify it. That is sufficient to prepare the stone for use on Shabbat and no action is necessary according to the gay on him. No action is necessary. And here's uh, the halakha on a course of building stones. One may not sit on stones designated for construction, even if before Shabbat he thought to utilize them. However, 
If one arrange the stones before Shabbat, it is permitted to sit on them in accordance with Rabbi Yochanan. And the explanation of Rabbi Ami. Some authorities permitted one to use them even if he merely thought to use them before Shabbat, which is the halacha in the case of palm fronds. Um, yeah, that's it. Itmar, it was stated, Rabbi Yossi ben Shaul Amar, Savar shel korot hava, it was a stack of beams. Not stones, he said it. Ah, not stones. But Rabbi Yochanan ben Shaul Amar, Gashush shel sfinah hava, it was the sounding pole of a ship. Ah, okay. It's a stick that you stick in the water there. See if the, the water is deep. Um, the one who said it was a sounding pole. Do you have a sounding pole? Yes. Kol Shiken Savar. Certainly, Revi would have allowed a stack, sitting on a stack of beams. Or Man Damar Savar, but the one who said it was a stack of beams. Aval. Uh, one who said it was a stack of beams said that Rebbe was limited to just that. Aval gashush kapeg kafed But for a sounding pole, the owner is particular about it because it could be ruined and it should be set aside from use. It was stated that there was a dispute with regard to this matter. Rabbi Yosef ben Shaul said this is a new stack of beams, not stones. Rabbi Yochanan ben Shaul said it was the sounding pole of a ship used to determine the depth of the water. The one who said that Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi permitted sitting on a ship's sounding pole, all the more so he permitted doing so in the case of beams. Because the sounding pole is like a more delicate or mm. more, more valuable item, perhaps. Well, also, of itself, it's not it's not intended to support weight, mm. whereas beams are. Okay. Uh, all the more so permitted doing so in the case. And with regard to the one who said that Rabbi Yehuda Anasi permitted sitting on the stack of beams, but in the case of a sounding pole, he would prohibit doing so right. because it is mukta due to monetary loss, as he is particular about it, that it will not become warped and damaged. Right. Zamora Shehi Kishura Kule. By the way, it just says to finish off what we just read there, mm. it says that if you did want to use it, the sounding pole to sit on, then you'd have to do a hell of a lot more preparation to it in order to make it non yeah. Like you have to fashion it or mm. maybe, I don't know, set up a row of stones or something and actually sit it on top like a bench or something like that. Or possibly wrap it in some soft material yeah. for your bottom. Yeah. Zamora Shehi Kishura Kule. So this was back in the Mishnah, a vine that is tied. We'll just tie to the pitcher to draw water with it. Kashura Ain, where it was tied, indeed we can draw water. Lo Kashura Lo. So where, it, where it's not tied to the pitcher, we can't use it. It's just to spend the pitcher and draw water. Lema Matnitin de lo Karavan Shimon ben Gamliel. Shall we say our Mishnah does not accord with Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel? Tanya, because we have a variety that said, Chariot shel dekel shegdaran le'etzim. Hardened branches of a date palm that one harvested for firewood, and then looked at. Venimlach alehen yeshiva, and he changed his mind about them and decided to use them for sitting. Sarich likshor, he must tie them into bundles. Remember, we learned this we too. We did. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, ein sarich likshor, 
He does not need to tie them. Uh, Rabbi Shimon, Shimon Ben Gamliel says it's sufficient to make an intention before Shabbat. So that sounds very similar to, our, to all of these cases. Amar Rav Sheshet, I feel the same as Rabban Shimon Ben Gamliel. You can even say the Mishnah is in accordance with Rabban Shimon Ben Gamliel. Ha Chavah Maskinan, what are we dealing with here? Bim Chuberet Be'aviha, where the vine is attached to the parent. Ah. Where the vine is actually still attached to the grapevine. In this case, even Rabban Shimon Gamliel agrees that in this instance it must be tied to the picture before it can be admitted for use. Do you understand that, Peter? Mm. Since an attached vine does not stand to be used for any purpose, its status cannot be elevated to that of utensil through mere intent to use it, but only through a genuine act of preparation, such as tying it to the picture. Ah, okay. So you've got a vine growing near the well. Yeah, you can't bring a you can't bring a picture over and tie it to the vine, and then untie it. Ihachika mishtamesh bimchuba lekarka. If so, meaning if it was attached to the vine, one will be making use of something that is attached to the ground, which is obviously prohibited. Lamata mishlosha. This is a short vine. <coughs> that is within three tefachim of the ground. So, I've got a halacha here that says it's permitted to make use of an attached item that is within three tefachim of the ground. Mm. Yeah, he, he covers that. That's here. There's mm-hmm. just a straight out note. The law permitting the use of a shoot connected to the ground within three handbreadths of the ground is based on the principle that objects separated by less than three handbreadths are considered connected. Therefore, a shoot within three handbreadths of the ground is considered to be part of the ground. Therefore, the rabbinic decree prohibiting use of a tree does not apply in that case. And then the halakha is... If a chute is tied to a bucket, one may utilize the bucket to draw water. However, if the chute is not tied to the bucket, then it is prohibited to use it, lest the person sever the chute and attach it to the bucket. I don't know what that's getting at. Sounds like the opposite of what we're reading. I'll just read what Rashi says. The mission of that is that one may use a short vine that is tied to a pitcher to draw water from a shallow well. And then Rabbeinu Hananel says, any vine or branch that is within three tefachim of the ground is considered like the ground itself rather than a separate growth. So I don't see if it's within three tefachim of the ground, you would imagine it can't be used at all. Should we keep going? Yes, yes. Ravashi Amar, Afilu Tema Bitlusha, you can even say the mission is dealing with a detached vine. Gezeira, um, Gezeira Shema Yiktom, on account of a decree that uh, enacted because someone might, uh, perhaps one will find the vine and cut it to his size. Ravashi said, even if you say that it is referring to a branch that is detached, nevertheless, its use is prohibited due to the decree, lest one cut and straighten the branch to prepare it for use with the bucket. Therefore, Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel teaches that there is no need for concern. I'm not getting this at all. What, did, what was it that Rav, Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel at the beginning, he said in the Baraisa, branches of a date palm harvested for firewood, 
which are mukta, and he changed his mind and wanted them for sitting, he must tie them to make them non-mukta. And then, oh, that was the Baraisa. And then Rabban, Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel says, he need not tie them. It is sufficient if he merely intends to sit on them before Shabbat. I just wanted to repeat that. Why about we do that, Roger? Now, I think I think the Gemara also is also is also curious about maybe Rabban Shimon and Ben Gamliel's duality. Um issue. So what this halakha I should that is, you read that right? Mm. If a Jew is tied to a bucket one means a bucket to draw one over the shoe. It's not tied to the bucket then it's ready to use less person okay. Bless the person sever the shoot and attach it to the bucket. Law permitting the use of a shoot connected to the ground within three hamburgers ground is based on the principle that objects separated by less than three hamburgers are considered connected. Therefore, a shoot with three and three hamburgers is considered to be part of the ground. Therefore, the rabbinic decree prohibiting use of a tree prohibiting use of a tree does not apply in that case. Ah, so it's a rabbinic decree. That it's Mukta. Um, I think maybe that maybe anything relating to Mukta is purely a living decree. Yeah. I think about it. I mean, uh, maybe Torah law something. forbids you to do things. Does it say don't touch this or that? Mm. I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I think. I think we'll need to ask somebody. But I think Mukta is purely rabbinic in order to prevent you doing that. Wasn't I right, Peter, ten minutes ago when yeah. I said we got it up to this point, now it's going to throw us? Pakaka <laughs> Halonkule, a window shutter. So, Rabbi Elias has said, when it's attached to the building by a rope, right, okay, we can use it as a shutter. Amar Rabbi Rabba Bar Khana, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Hakol modim she'en osin ohel arai batchila biyom tov. All agree that we may not erect a temporary structure initially on yom tov. The ein sarich lama b'shabbat, and it doesn't need to be said that it's on Shabbat. I mean, it stands to reason, right? Lo nechleku ela lehosif. They disagree only about making a temporary addition to the structure. Is that the way you've got it? Only with regard to adding to to an existing tent. Oh, so it need not be said about that this is forbidden on Shabbos and they disagree this is they disagree only in regard to making a temporary addition mm. um, to the structure. Shirabi Eliezer Omer to an existing structure. Uh, Rabbi Eliezer says, Ein Mosifin be Yom Tov, we may not make an addition on Yom Tov. The Ein Sarich Lama Shabbat, and it, we don't need to say it, that it's obviously forbidden on Shabbos. The Chachamim Omrim, Mosifin be Shabbat, we may make an addition, even on Shabbos, the Eintarich Lama B'Yontov. And obviously we can also do so on Yontov. The Chachamim Omrim Ben Kach or Ven Kach Pokakim Bo. But the sages say, in either case, we may shutter the window with it. My Ben Kach or Ven Kach. What does it mean in either case? Can I just see the mission again? Mm. It says... So, this was said where it, where it was attached, suspended by the rope or whatever, mm. or attached with the leather, then 
uh, regulates it says uh, we can shut with it. And he says, but if it's not attached with a rope or mm. leather, we can't shut with it. Can't make a shutter with it. And the, sa the sages say, bankach or bankach. In either case, we can shut the window with it. <coughs> There's um, two halachot regarding temporary tents. It is prohibited to build a tent on Shabbat or on a festival, even if it is temporary. The definition of a temporary tent in this context is a structure with a roof, constructing permanent significant partitions, e.g. the walls of a sukkah, is also prohibited. However, it is permitted to build temporary or insignificant partitions, e.g. a partition established for privacy. The second one is permitted to add to a temporary tent. For example, one who partially spread at least one hand breadth of a tent-like covering before Shabbat is permitted to extend it. So there we are. Mm. That might come useful during Sukkot if your sukkah gets blown over or something goes wrong. Yeah. <coughs> um, it just says here, does it mean that we may shut the window, whether the shutter is suspended in the air or not, but it must be attached to the mm. building, so meaning what it could be sitting on the ground but still attached, perhaps? Could be. Well, I was thinking another way it might be working is that it's attached at the top and you've uh, licked it upwards, licked it upwards, dropped it up. Yeah, you wouldn't exactly say that's being suspended, would you? Well, when you let Resting. it go, it's definitely suspended. Mm. Is, but is that what you're getting at? That, that's what I'm thinking of. Or perhaps it means that we may shutter with it whether it is attached to the building or not, which is what I was originally mm. thinking. Uh -huh. That's a good question. Pop it into the window and tie it in so that people can't get in. Say that again. If you've got the shutter you know, sitting on the ground and it's the same size as the window, you sort of prop it up, tie it on a, you know, at each corner and you've got security in the window blocked on Shabbat, on Shabbat for the night. You yeah. had it open on a warm night so that you catch the breeze and then to prevent fees you pop in the shutter and tie it in for security. 